What is up guys, The Casey's here and today I almost forgot to record this video so it's a little late but we are going to get this out before tonight and uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about table views. I recently realized because I was doing Android or I'm learning Android, um, I, for, I kind of forgot what it's like to be a beginner in development and it's definitely difficult, there's a lot of learning and it can, it can be difficult if you don't get the good proper instruction on things or if the instructions vague then it can also be difficult but um, I want to talk to you guys about table views specifically because table views are an important part of development I mean pretty much every single app that you make professionally or you make that is high quality includes table views uh, in Android, I'm not sure. There's like a whole bunch of different things you can do. Um, like table views in iOS, there's basically just table views. But uh, like I said in the description, it's not clickbait. Um, I did that jokingly because everyone says not clickbait on the videos now. But anyways, uh, it's not clickbait. And we're going to get into these table views. And hopefully you guys can learn and really grasp how a table view works and why you do what. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is go to our main does storyboard. Now on this view controller, uh, I'm going to drag on a table view. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to pin it to all of these sides. Okay, and then I'm just going to throw in a cell. I'm not sure if we're going to use the cell, but uh, maybe. I'll just throw some text in here. Just in case, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so, okay. Table view is what holds these cells, okay? So this, what I threw in here is a cell. The thing that says label, it's a cell. You can see over here on the side. Table view contains cells. It basically manages these cells. So if you go into Instagram uh, and you start swiping, these are table view cells that are being thrown in here. They have data and they're put into the cell. Then the data is loaded. But on the screen, your screen may be here, it's being loaded down here, so when you scroll, it goes up high, and then it gets deallocated, I believe it's called, um, where basically you're removed from memory. They take that cell, they reuse the cell down here at the bottom. It's like a, it kind of goes like this, in a sense. So it goes, it starts out below the screen, where you can't see it, then it goes up where you can't see it, and then it reuses the cell reuses the cell, reuses the cell, uh, or the opposite way, whichever way you're scrolling. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so if you didn't know, that's what a table view does with its cells. Um, and the reason you want to use a table view over like a linked list, I believe it's called, um, or things of that nature is table views have reuse cells. So it's not just like as you scroll, it's loading new memory and then it's saving all the previous ones in memory. It's deallocating those and then creating new ones. So it doesn't take up as much power on your phone. It's a lot faster and makes the user experience a lot better. Um, but let's go to the view controller. And one thing, um, so right here, we're just going to create an IB outlet for our tape. Okay, we've done this a, a thousand times, but okay. Um, and then down here at the bottom, I don't know if we've done this, but uh, we're gonna create an extension of a view controller, and we're going to import our, or we're gonna extend from UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. Okay. So in this extension down here is extending from the class. Um, so we could, if we wanted to put these up here, if we want to, um, but I think this makes the code a lot more simple. Uh, margin, margin, marginalizing it um so right now we're getting this error was the same view controller does not conform to protocol ui table view data source so what is ui table view data source um 
or why isn't it conforming to this UI table view data source? Basically, in a UI table view, there are a few things that you have to create or use in order for the table view to work. Use table view, UI table view as an example. It needs to load certain cells. It needs to know how many cells to load, and it needs to know what to load inside of those cells. And that is what UI table view data source does. And you have to you or you have to conform to a few protocols in order to use UI table view. Uh, there's a lot more protocols that you can do, like a did select, um, footer, header, like on the table view. A whole bunch of different things you can do. Uh, if you command click on it, and then you go to jump to definition, you can read on all of the different functions. But you have to import um, cell for row index path. And so in, in here with return a UI table view cell. And then number of sections, number of rows in the section. And then this is going to be return. We'll, we'll just return four for right now. Okay. Um, if we were to run this right now, we would get four table view cells. Okay. It, it just hasn't loaded. If I build it, that should go away. Um, well, actually, no, that's not true. If we were to build this right now, nothing would happen. Um, even if we have the table view linked up, nothing's going to happen. Um, you have to, in view to load, say self dot table view dot uh, data or not self dot table view. Sorry, table view dot data source equals self, and table view dot delegate e equals self. So without these two functions being called. Um, well, they're not really functions, but it's telling the table view, this object, this is an object, that its data source is coming from this view controller. So when it gets this table view to data source equals self, and it's gonna come down here, and now it knows uh, how many rows in each section, or how many rows in section, and self row at index path, okay? If you don't, have table view dot data source equals self, it will never call these functions right here. Okay. And delegate is almost like a way that you're able to get callback. So it's almost like UI notification or notification center or whatever that is. Um, like the name, uh, I forgot the name. But so for instance, you can use UI notification center for when you tap the screen, it can send a notification to the keyboard to dismiss. Um, it's almost the same thing. It's a lot faster, more structured, and it's usually related to a class. So on the delegate, we can get callbacks for when the user taps on a cell. Um, I, I think you, yeah, basically the delegate gives you callbacks. If you go into the UI table view class, um, you will see the delegate uh, functions and things of that nature, I believe. Let's see, jump to, to definition. This might take a while. So here's the delegate. And then there are certain functions that are declared only for a delegate. And they, they set all that stuff for you, thankfully. Um, but there's lots of different things. Delete sections, all these different things. But if you, if you want callbacks from the table view, that's what the delegate gives you. In self row and index path, you have to create a cell. Like right now, I'm just returning an empty cell. Um, you can return a cell with a reuse identifier, which is connected up to the cell. Uh, I can show you that. that um, yeah, why not? Uh, so if you click on the cell here, right, it's inside our table view, we have a reuse identifier. So you're able to link up this reuse identifier to the table view so that the table view um, knows which cell you want to keep reusing or you want to reuse for this instance. Uh, because you can use different cells, which is a, a plus to UI table views. Whereas like linked lists, you can only use one type of cell or it gets very complicated. Um, another plus. But um, you need to create that or you can just use a normal UI table view cell. 
um, configuring it. Like in our videos, we, we use, sometimes use custom classes on the table view cell and we can configure it with a function to that cells class. But you're doing everything you want to do to the cell in uh, cell for row at index path. This is like when the cell is being generated and put into the screen. So it's not necessarily like my hands the screen, it's going to be down here somewhere being generated. So when the user scrolls up, by the time it's on the screen, they'll actually see it. Um, if it's not being loaded as soon as it's on the screen, it's being loaded a little bit before it's on the screen, if that makes sense. And then when it goes off the screen and uh, the, the system uh, UI kit or whatever decides that it doesn't need it, it removes it and then reuses it. Um, if that, uh, that should make sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment below. I guess I can explain it better, or you could read articles on it, if that makes sense. Um, in, in a real instance, if you guys are looking for a real instance, like use case instance, number of sections is going to be like an array of data, right? So you're going to have an array of type, of type user or posts, and you get the data up here somewhere, you call it imbuted load, and you create an array. Um, I guess I can create one here. Array is going to equal uh, right and in our example it's post but I don't want the error. Um, then here you can return array dot count. Okay so it's only going to return um, the as many cells that are in this array. Okay. It's only going to call cell for row at index path that many times. Um, and then if you guys didn't know, index path is like the rows location. So the first one's zero, then, right, is it zero? I think it's zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's able to, um, what do you call it? Like, you, you can take it right out of the array. Um, you can use index path dot row to get the location of the cell and you can use that integer uh, to relate it to an array and grab the values from that array and put them inside the cell. So many times you'll see something like um, array and then they'll go with an index path dot row. So you see how it's an integer. The value of the row, row element of the index path. And now you're able to grab this index's value in that array. And then you can grab that data, put it inside the cell, and then return the cell. So hopefully that makes sense. There's other functions and things. Uh, did select row index path. I use that one quite a bit if you need to select the row and then perform a function. That one is good. Um, I'm, I think you guys should be able to understand UI table views. Uh, it's a very important thing to understand. So if you don't understand it, please leave a comment below. Um, you will use UI table views a lot. I, I, I don't know. I have what? I don't know. Maybe like one app on the app store that doesn't use UI table views. And yeah, does it? No, it doesn't. It's a pretty simple app. But most apps do use UI table views. Um, they're useful, they're easy, like settings, like I, I use a UI table view for settings, you know, on Instagram, how they have settings, that's, a, to, to my knowledge, it's a UI table view, um, and if it's not, then you can still use the UI table view and it works just the same, but uh, hopefully you guys get a good grasp of the UI table view, if you don't, leave a comment below, I have plenty of videos utilizing um, UI table views on the social media app, video. Uh, the most recent one would be the best for you guys to watch. Um, the messaging one. And I don't know. I have like a table view search uh, bar that I go over. But uh, table views are definitely important. If you don't get them, you need to understand them as a beginner. Um, Apple has great documentation on this, all the different functions and things. Like if you command click on UI table view, you can jump to definition and read its classes, uh, functions, delegates. Um, get to know it because if you want to make apps, if you want to work for a company, you're definitely going to be using UI table views um, on a regular basis, I would assume, but you definitely use them at some point. 
So, thank you guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, post videos every week. I might be doing some more live streams, um, getting into more apps and things of that nature. Depends on what's going on. Definitely getting into more Android stuff. I'm learning Kotlin, uh, which is cool. It's Android's new official language. Um, I think it's always been used on Android, just it hasn't been able to, you, you couldn't code in Kotlin, it was like a background thing. But, I will see you guys in the next video, who knows, it might be an Android video, my last Android video wasn't too good, it was my first one, and um, <laughs> you might see more, uh, you might see more. I, I learned some stuff from that, and that's why I make these videos, because I learn probably a lot more than you guys learn. What do you call it? It makes me understand the principles that I'm teaching a lot better. And sometimes I mess up. Uh, but I appreciate you guys, all the support in the comments below. And all of the th thumbs up. And you guys are awesome. Please drop a like on this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.